Hey friends, today I want to give you a quick introduction to DartPad. DartPad is an IDE-like experience for Dart in the browser um, that gives you quick access to running Dart programs and simple Flutter applications. It's pretty cool. I recommend you give it a shot. Um, even if you never used Dart before, it's a great way to get some experience. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the different functionality, different features, and how to use it. First things first, when you first go to dartpad.dev, which I'll include in the description, you get some code in the left. This is where you will be writing your code. You get console output on the right and you get documentation on the lower right. And an important piece to note is this null safety toggle on the bottom. It defaults to off currently, but I recommend you switching it to on. Null safety is a new feature and coming to Dart in Dart 2.12, which will assumedly, assumedly be, be released relatively soon. It's definitely the future, uh, future of writing Dart programs, and it will just result in safer um, and easier to understand applications. So I definitely recommend turning that toggle on. It is supported for Dart and Flutter, uh, but if you need to, it's okay to turn it off, especially if you're testing something that needs to support older versions of Dart or something along those lines, but it is a big win and not, I'm assuming in not so long, not too long, this button will disappear and null safety will be the only option. So yeah, first things first after that, um, there's a run button. This is how you run your code. We have a basic application here with a main method, a loop looping from i equals zero to i equals four, it prints out hello, i plus one. So we'll pr print out hello one all the way to hello five. Um, and we see it in the console, which is a console application using Dart's built-in method. Because this is a method print, we can see the documentation for it. You can either click, just click on it, or you can click F1 if for some reason it's not working. It'll show up in the documentation tab. Um, we can see some information about the method, what it accepts. So it accepts a nullable object um, and some documentation about what it does. You also have a button to open library docs. If perhaps there are, uh, you want to look farther than the Dart doc documentation. Um, this will also work on methods you write yourself within DartPad. So that's pretty cool. Um, some other big features while we're here of DartPad is that it has some basic IDE features, including uh, completion and auto completion and um, quick fixes. So let's start with a quick fix. What's an easy one um, that people make all the time? They forget semicolons, especially if they're used to a language that doesn't support semicolons. And we see in the bottom right that the Dart analysis server realizes we have an error. It tells us what it is. Oh, it expected to find a uh, semicolon and it tells us what line we can click it it'll highlight that and we can bring it. and then if we're there we can click alt enter because it has a suggestion of how to fix this this is a quick fix not all errors will have quick fixes but a, a lot of simpler ones do and um, it can be quite useful and definitely uh, kind of like speed up your application uh, or speed up your development process. There are also some lints included that detect common uh, like style issues and things like that that do have quick fixes as well. So be on the lookout for that. Um, another feature is auto completion. If you're interested um, in the keyboard shortcuts, you can see this keyboard bu button in the bottom right. You can click it. You can see that um, quick fix is alt center and completion is control plus space. So say we just want to add like a print method to wrap up our like printing of hello. Um, we can write print because it's not a thing yet. We can see there's errors in the bottom right, which makes sense. And what's cool though, is that we can see this first error actually suggest um, like a possible solution we could do. And it actually links to documentation where we can read more about this specific error. In this case, we know we're not done, but in other complicated uh, situations, it may be more complicated. It may be worth referring to that. So what we can do, we can click control space and it will give us a suggestion of what we're trying to type. In this case, we are trying to type print. So this is a pretty good suggestion and click enter. And I can just go ahead and type by or whatever I want. And I can use that um, quick fix to insert the semicolon and I can run it, uh, run the application. I forget the key binding, but luckily it's there. It's control enter, it runs. I clicked control R, oh, sorry. Um, obviously it's not that, but we can see hello one, two, three, four, five, and by. Um, this will work for more complex methods, methods of your own. Um, so definitely recommend getting used to that because 
It's similar to what other IDEs support, um, maybe a bit slower just because it is communicating with the server, but um, definitely still useful. Now, um, there's a few other buttons that we'll go over. First is new pad. This is like, say you wanna, you're done with your code, you wanna move on. This is like, okay, do you wanna discard your current pad and move to something new? Now you have, if you accept that, you have multiple choices. You can either create a dart pad, <laughs> a dart pad, dart pad, or you can create a flutter pad, or you can create a dart pad with HTML support. Let's check that out first. So um, now if we enable HTML support, this means we can access the DOM and we can specify an HTML file and a CSS file. In this case, we have an H1 with the ID of header. We have some CSS for our body and our H1 header. Then in our Dart program, from a main method, like all Dart programs start with, um, in, um, we go ahead and use a query selector to try to get that element that has the ID of header. Um, and then if we were able to find that header, we set the text of it to hello world. Um, this query selector function, we can click F1 to get the documentation. Um, the tab's closed right now, but if I open it, um, we can see and we can resize this. We can resize all the tabs that we want. Let's go to the uh, console if we need to. And I can close that when I'm done. Um, this comes from the Dart HTML library, which is imported. Um, all Dart core libraries and um, web libraries are supported, in, uh, but um, Dart IO, uh, deferred imports, um, other like VM specific libraries like mirrors also are not supported. So just keep that in mind. And if you have any issues with that, um, there's a list on the website, which I'll link to of things that do not work. So this is cool. If we run it, um, just clicking the run button, we can see we get hello world. This is like a little frame, iframe where we have um, this HTML included and the CSS and we run it. Um, once we found that header, we set text to hello world. Um, you can even uh, go ahead, modify the CSS. Maybe I want to make the color red. We can see it's red. It's pretty quick. Um, super cool, actually. Really fun to play with and just kind of like, it's a good way to just get ideas down quickly. So you don't have to like worry about setting up Dart locally, getting an IDE or a text editor. Um, this is, I even still use it to just kind of play around with ideas that I want to test really quickly. Some other features we have is the ability to format files. In Dart, formatting is not a problem that we, like, you know, everyone has their own opinions about. I mean, maybe they do, but really the solution is we use the Dart format tool, um, which just has standard rules for formatting our code, and it allows Dart to be pretty consistent. So once, a, once someone reads Dart code, they can just understand it right away. Um, and if we try to introduce some weird, like, different spacing issues and maybe, like, extra stuff there, maybe like an extra tab there, um, like maybe something like that, whatever. Uh, as long as the valid program is able to format it, I can click format and boom, we get some much easier to recode that every Dart developer will be familiar with. Um, there's all, there is also the key binding for it, um, shift control F, if that's something you're interested in. So that's really nice. And I really recommend you get used to writing in this format, but also before you ever share code with others or submit it, um, definitely get used to running format. And even if, while you're writing code, just run it over time. Um, so there's, it will worry about like wrapping lines for you and just making your code a lot more reasonable. Now, something else uh, is the ability to reset. Say I add some new code here, like print, hi, YouTube. Um, this is great, I can run it and we can see that it ends up in the console here. But I say I wanna get back just that, I wanna get rid of this, get back, I can click reset. It'll reset my current pad to its original state. Um, a really quick way to go about that. Um, it's maybe you can also just create a new pad, but it's a, you know, th this way you don't have to go through the whole process of like figuring out which one you want. Or if you like start from like a sample or something like that, it'll reset to what the sample was based off of. Um, so we can actually check that out um, to see what that looks like. Um, there's a samples tab in the upper right that provides you with some sample Dart and Flutter programs. Um, a Hello World, into Double Mix and Fibonacci. Um, I think the more interesting ones are the Flutter ones because this is Flutter rendering in the web and you writing a Flutter application in the web. So let's see what that looks like. Let's check out the Sunflower application. Um, currently there are lints, but we can go ahead and hide these. So we don't really care. Lints are just kind of like saying like, 
you can improve this code to kind of match a standard style. And there are some standard lens included here. Um, that will be fixed in a future um, update of DartPad. So this example doesn't have any lens triggered by default. But what you can see, we have a Flutter application actually running embedded in our web application. It's really cool. Um, it's rendering to the canvas pretty much. And we can see we can, it's pretty fast, even though this is like a debug build and it's uh, just running in the browser in another web application. Um, we have a navigation menu um, with even these, oh, look at that nice icon, a title. We can control this uh, toggle wheel thingy or whatever, this bar, uh, change how many seeds there are, super cool. And we have um, a window of our code um, on the left, you can kind of look at this as inspiration to create your own flutter pad, or you can even just modify this. Say I want to change like the radius of seeds. I could like say, I could go ahead, run that. And you can see the, oh, wow, they're, they're really big. Um, so you can, you know, run code, make the changes you want, write your complete own code. Um, like I said, uh, all dark core libraries besides like VM specific ones are supported and uh, most flutter libraries are as well. Um, that are like part of the default Flutter install. Currently, DartPad doesn't support additional packages, but that's a goal for the future. Um, you can go ahead and play with some other samples as well. Um, check them out. Uh, for example, this uh, implicit animation, click a disc, it does some cool like easing and moving around, really fancy. The fact that this runs in a browser, code that you're just writing and just runs really quickly with no setup is what makes DartPad a huge win. Um, say you don't want to start with a sample. You can also create a flutter pad like I showed earlier. It starts with just a basic example. In this case, it's similar to that HTML example we saw. It just creates hello world. We can see we can't select it, uh, which kind of highlights it is a little bit different. We don't have those HTML and CSS pads because we don't need it. We're writing flutter. This is rendering to the canvas um, and with decent performance actually. So. I recommend giving this a shot, especially if you're interested in Flutter. And all the kind of tools you're used to, seeing the console, the documentation, getting the keyboard shortcuts, um, switching null safety on and off, uh, the autocomplete, the quick fixes should uh, work as desired. Um, beyond that, um, and we'll also see the issues in the bottom corner. Um, and even for Flutter, uh, the documentation works. If I click F1, we can see we have like some actually thorough information about a stateless widget and uh, like it links to YouTube videos and ever and pretty much most features of Dart Doc just work natively right in DartPad. Um, beyond that, there's not a whole lot to DartPad. Um, it is kind of just a way to get familiar with Dart and tinker really quickly. If you want to create more complex application, it is often better to go, you know, click this install SDK button, learn how to install Dart, set it up on your computer, use an IDE like IntelliJ or uh, Visual Studio Code, and, you know, write more complex applications because one file, you know, can be a bit limiting. And like I said, the performance isn't as amazing as a desktop native application would be. The last few um, things that I'd like to point out is this title's really cool. <laughs> it's just a randomly generated title. Um, in the future, it may be used for like built-in sharing features, um, but for now, it's just kind of fun. Um, you can kind of see what your different titles are generated as. Um, they're generated like randomly with the token. And then we have the, th the three dots in the corner. It opens uh, some information about how to share code on DartPad, which uses like GitHub's GIS or GIS or whatever. Uh, a link to GitHub, uh, so you can like make a pull request to DartPad, add new features to it if you want, or make an issue uh, link to Dart's website and Flutter's website, um, as well as a link to the privacy notice and a way to send feedback about DartPad itself. Um, and then if you're interested, you can also see what version of Dart or Flutter uh, DartPad is currently using that you're set up for. So um, you can see that I'm using this one. And... Uh, we have Dart 2.12. It looks like there's a small bug there since I did have no safety toggle, but I was using a non no safety SDK. Um, so there are some things being worked out. So if you find any issues, you know, if, please, uh, you know, make them on the GitHub repository and people would love to be able to help you figure them out. So yeah, that's a quick introduction to DartPad. I'll include the link in the description. I recommend uh, giving a shot, trying out Dart if you haven't before, or even just, you know, seeing uh, try to like make one of your 
pieces of your Flutter application in Dartpad uh, and share it with your friends. You know, get get their feedback. Sorry, it's quite fun. And thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye.